Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for attending the Sports and Sports Academies uh, webinar for, for us at Barnes and Southgate College. Uh, I'm James Edgerly. I'm the Sports Development Manager. We also have uh, Marco Sabino uh, on the call, uh, on the on the show, on the show, on the on the webinar. Um, We'll be talking for maybe about 30 minutes, uh, try not to make it too long. Um, hopefully you'll find it informative uh, and there will be some opportunities to message your questions. Um, there's in the chat function, my colleague Nick, who's also on the call in the background, uh, will be putting some messages up sporadically so that indicating where you can ask questions and Marco and I will do our best to answer every single one of them at the end. Um, so this talk is around everything to do with sport at Barnet Southgate College. And um, both Marco and I will be swapping the presenting duties at certain points. So I'll be sharing my screen now. Okay, and Okay, so hopefully, um, hopefully you can see that. So there's there's Marco and I uh, in a slightly bigger image. Um, just so you know who we are. Firstly, there's a, a picture that was actually done last year of some of our student athletes in their their various poses for their various programs. We've just done a new photo shoot for this year. But just to talk about, if you ever see that Bears logo that you can see on some of their tops. Uh, if you see that on our website or on our Twitter handles or Instagram handles, or if you ever see anything connected to, to BSC Bears, that's referring to the sports department at BSC. So um, it's something that we came up with oh, probably six, seven years ago now. Um, to borrow that sort of American collegiate uh, idea of having the whole sports infrastructure under one brand, I suppose, so that everyone can get behind some programs buy into it more than others um, and because we're associated with some such strong brands in our own right in terms of our partners um, that affects generally whether whether the teams or the athletes like to to known as the bsc bears but that's essentially what it's known as is uh, is our is our sports branding for the for the college so who are we so bsc is the sports pump for for barnet southgate college and we are one of the largest sports departments in the UK and certainly in London, and also one of the most successful. And how do I quantify that? So that's based on the, the metric of the volume of student numbers, the variety of programs that we have in terms of the sports academies and the, the breadth of the academic curriculum offer, um, the amount of students associated with sports, either studying it or in the academies and as a student athlete. Um, but also our track record of success over the years. So the progression of our students into the professional arena in their respective sports or into higher education or American scholarships, uh, team successes, international call-ups, all those metrics certainly make us one of the powerhouses of further education sport in the UK uh, as a college. So in terms of the current academies, the education academies, we have a Tottenham Hotspur male football programme, a women's football programme associated with the WSL Academy, uh, the NFL Academy, we have an athletics academy, a boxing programme, England Boxing Academy, a Wimex tennis scholarship package, we have a basketball academy, and then we have a leadership programme. So all of those function very similar in the sense of they're about embedding training and games programmes into the study programme of the students attached to them. Um, slight variations in each one, which I'll go into in a bit more detail shortly. Um, but those are our, our headline uh, academies that we have here at Barnet Southgate College. In terms of the delivery sites and the campuses of the college, uh, you should be aware from seeing the website or if you've attended any other webinars, that we're spread across North London um, and we've got three main campuses, those being the Southgate campus, the Wood Street campus and the Collendale campus. Um, we also have the Edmonton Green campus for ESOL um, and we've got some other remote delivery locations but the three main campuses are those those centres there which I described. And what you what campus you study at where you're based is dictated by what you're studying. So each department has the campuses that it delivers out of. Some do a couple of campuses um, 
but most will be based at one campus. So for example, the sports department uh, in the main is based at Southgate campus. Uh, I know, for example, A-levels, they're based at Wood Street, business is Wood Street, um, hair and beauty is at Collendale, for example, construction at Collendale. So what you study dictates where you're where you're based and the predominant base for the sports department is Southgate campus. And when we say the sports department, that encompasses everything from the teaching staff and Marco's team um, to the academy staff and the coaching staff and support staff and also sports enrichment personnel. So we all come under that sports banner, although in some respects we're almost two separate teams, but we all come under that sports banner. Um, and as, as I mentioned on the call, we have Marco, who is the curriculum manager for sport, uh, and I myself in the sports development manager. So I manage all the non-academic side of sport and Marco manages all the curriculum aspects of sport. So what we do, so when you come to study at Barnet and Southgate College, you'll be on something called a study programme. Okay, so a study programme is a combination of your academic main qual, um, any maths and English requirements you may have if you haven't passed them already, work experience that's in built into your, to your programmes, into your study life, your tutorial and, uh, and pastoral packages and of course in my instance your education academy program your sports academy program so all those ingredients come together to form what is your student life at the college what is your study program um, and each one of those counts towards your attendance towards your what you're expected at what you're expected to deliver uh, and your improvement as a student and as a student athlete during the time that you're with the college to run all our academies, as I mentioned, we partner with some industry leading bodies to deliver them. Um, so they all come under my management in terms of the head coaches. Uh, and we often go off site to utilize some excellent world class facilities to train out of um, to deliver those academies. One of the strengths of the college, I always say, is our staff. Uh, a lot of the staff have been with us a long time. Uh, some of them are newer staff. Um, some of them on the academic side, but some of them in the uh, academy side, they all bring with them a real depth of industry experience. Uh, and a lot of us uh, are still practicing in our industry on top of the commitments at the college. So Marco on the call uh, is also a personal trainer of David Lloyd, for example. I myself work for the Premier League um, outside of my full-time job at the college. So working with the EPPP academies uh, and also recently with the first teams through COVID. Um, we also have other staff um, who are practicing coaches or high level uh, personal trainers. Uh, we have physiotherapists on staff. Jack Dimitri, who heads our physio clinic, has also got his own practice and um, has worked in professional sports at a very high level and currently is the England C team physiotherapist. So all these all these different experiences, all these knowledge bases that the staff are bringing with them from their from their additional employments, come back to try and help us improve what we do at the college, both on the academic side and in the non-academic side. So what are we preparing you for? So essentially, we're preparing you for exit routes. And those exit routes are about a variety of things. They could be university, could be both here in the UK or also abroad. It could be into employment. You know, there's a lot of different exit routes for our for our students, but essentially we're looking to build a whole picture, a well-rounded student athlete whilst you're in our in our tutelage at the college. So it's more than just you coming and studying a course. We're looking to cater for you as a student, but also as an athlete and as a person. Um, to do that, we try to impart on you the knowledge that you need to pass your course to excel in your sport but also the skills and behaviors that will assist you moving forward so whether that's development of your life skills or your independence or your time management or the way you conduct yourself the way that you challenge problems and grow as a person all these different things are challenged whilst you're with us um, both in the classroom and outside the classroom so just so we, uh, just to have a bit of interaction with you guys, because obviously this is not a live event, so we can't see you. Um, we, my colleague Nick, going to launch a poll now. So there's three questions on it, and it just gives me a chance to find out a little bit more about who's on the call. 
and also what they're looking for from this from this session. Um, and there's three questions. So the first question, um, so it should pop up on your screen or there should be a poll icon on the on the Zoom webinar. The first question is, what are you wanting to find out most find out most about from this talk? Uh, there should be four options there. So the first option is either a sports academy, the football, the NFL, the athletics, tennis, the basketball, boxing, etc. cetera. Uh, the second option is sport as an academic subject. The third option is what facilities or performance services on offer we have, the physio, the gym, the TAS, et cetera. Uh, and the final one is just general sports enrichment, turn up and play, social side of things, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the second question is what sports are represented in the audience? So what sport do you mainly participate in regardless of level or what sports academy program would you be most keen to hear about? Again, the options will be there on the screen. And then the final question is, do you think you may be a TAS athlete? And by that, I mean, are you currently international, national, or at worst regional level in your sport? And I'll come on to TAS later uh, in terms of the importance of that. So quick 10 seconds more to answer those questions. Um, pretty straightforward. You can only select one option uh, on each question. Five more seconds. Okay, hopefully everyone's figured out um, how to do that and have answered your questions. So Marco is going to come off mute now and share some of the results with me so that I can see them or I can hear about them because I'm sharing my screen. Um, so James, so for question one, uh, what are you wanting to find out most about from this talk? Uh, the majority, mm -hmm. so 68% has responded Sports Academy. Surprise, mm -hmm. surprise. 24% <laughs> um, uh, Sports as an academic subject. Uh, and then we've got 8% okay. 8, 8 as facilities and sports performance. No mm -hmm. percentage for enrichment. Okay. For the second question, 44% mm -hmm. uh, responded football um soccer male um 12 percent football soccer female 12 percent nfl 16 percent athletics four percent for basketball and boxing and eight percent for tennis okay great then for question so three spread, yeah. yeah and then for question three we've got 44 percent um so said yes to TAS and 56% okay. uh, no to TAS. So 44% of people back themselves as, a, as an international, national, at worst regional level athlete. Okay. That's correct, yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see, I suppose. <laughs> thank you, Marco. No problem. Um, thank you for doing that, everyone. That helps uh, know how much we can focus our, our, our content on and, and what to talk about. So. But actually, because there was a fairly even spread, it means I've pretty much got to cover everything, but, uh, which is absolutely fine. So these are the, the partners that we work with, um, as displayed by their badges on screen. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about each, and one, each one of them, uh, but I will say a, a degree about each one of them. Uh, the reason being is that we will definitely host more sports-specific academy webinars in the future. Um, so usually, I think we, we've earmarked and penciled them in for January. So when you apply for a sports academy, or even if you just follow the, the college um, site uh, and socials, uh, these will be promoted. So it's definitely worth attending the sports specific webinars, where I'll do a very similar presentation, but also a presentation by our head coaches on each one of them, uh, which will be really informative. We did them last year, a couple of times for each one, and they were they were absolutely great. I think people appreciated them. Uh, you can actually watch them back on our website uh, now uh, on each individual academy page, um, which I'm sure Nick will put the links to the general sports academy uh, landing page, and you can delve down from each one into each specific academy. But to, to talk about, uh, I think Marco said 40% or something like that were top notch for male applicants. So um, we have the football academy programs with Tottenham Hotspur. So we have a male one and a female one. If I talk about the male one first, we've had a partnership with Tottenham Hotspur on the male side for, I think this is the 12th year now. Um, 
hugely successful in that time in terms of the amount of boys who passed through it and the successes we've produced from it. Um, we've pretty much produced a professional footballer near enough every year for, for at least nine or ten years of that period. Um, and even currently, we've got some really promising young young males going on trials with the various academy programs uh, in the EPPP Premier League setups. So how it works is we obviously partner with the football club. The coaches uh, are all from Tottenham Hotspur and work within their academy um, outside of what they do with us. So it guarantees a minimum of two training sessions a week and a games program. Or if you're in the elite squad, it's up to four training sessions a week and a games program. Um, the other football logo you'll see on the screen is Harringay Borough. So they're also a sort of third partner for that program. So all the training and the games take place down at Harringay Borough Football Club, uh, which is a great 3G facility and uh, really adds to the, to the quality of the program. It's a great surface to work on, but also gives additional exit routes for young, mo, mo, young boys on the program. So the Harringay under 18s at the moment, for example, you have to be on the Tottenham Hotspur football program to play for the under 18s. We manage that program. Additionally, it provides pathways into the under 23s uh, and also in the first team. So the first team at Harringay Borough at the moment has two or three boys who've either currently in the programme or have recently graduated from, from the Tottenham Hotspur male football programme. We've had a lot of team successes in the time that we've been with them. So lots of regional championships, a couple of national championships and national finals. Um, and really, if you're a keen footballer, um, and wanting to, to combine it with education, there's not, I would back ourselves against any college football program in the country in terms of the standards of coaching, the standards of wider support um, and our exit routes and successes from that program. Moving on to the women, um, again, that program has been running around, I think this is its 10th year uh, with Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, there's been some evolutions in that time in terms of mainly where the Tottenham Hotspur women's senior side sit. So now they're in the WSL, um, which means that that brings with it some associated um, needs in terms of the WSL Academy and their talent pathways. So our programme sits just underneath the WSL Academy. Uh, and we also have a few girls who are also in the WSL Academy. And it's meant as a, a pathway into the WSL Academy uh, if you're good enough. So Olga, for example, has graduated from this program last year and is now into the WSL Academy. And over the years, there's been many, many young, young female footballers who've progressed up the Spurs pathway uh, as part of this collaboration. So I think it's at around 11 or 12 um, young women have moved from our program into the first team. Um, and some of whom are still in the first team. So Jess Naz, Who's, who was an England under-19 lioness, um, is currently in the first team uh, uh, at Tottenham Hotspur in the WSL. Um, for that training, for that session, it's uh, two training sessions a week in a games programme minimum. If you're in the elite group of the women's side of things, there is the opportunity to infill into some of the WSL academy sessions as well, particularly on a Monday evening where their performance night is based here at the college. We, of course, have the NFL Academy as well. Um, that is in its third year uh, here at the college. Um, it's a program we founded uh, in partnership with the NFL uh, and developed together. The, it is the recognized talent pathway for that sport in this country. So if you're an ambitious young American footballer or even a talented athlete with some crossover skills, we want to hear from you um, and we look at your athleticism and look at your your potential in that sport to try and progress it further. It's already unlocked over a million dollars worth of scholarship offers to uh, NCAA programs in the US for some of our, our soon to be or recent graduates. Uh, to be on that program, you get three training sessions a week on the field, three to four lifting sessions in the performance gym a week, and also three class-based sessions a week, um, looking at film, studying film. And that's all on top of your main main curriculum, main course, as I say, it's part of your study program at the college. We have the England Boxing Academy. So that commits the 
student athletes to around eight hours of boxing provision a week. Um, most of the um, boxes we have in it are bouting and they're with a club uh, outside of the college. So this is aiding that club. So I think it's important to say that if you come onto these sports academies, near enough all of them, we're not looking for you to leave your club outside of the college. We're looking to aid it. Clearly, in some cases, there's going to be discussions about the amount of loading that you're doing. Um, but in the most cases, this could be collaborated with your external club or external coaching staff. So in England boxing, it's on three occasions, up to eight hours a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, um, technical, tactical aspects of boxing, sparring, if and we put them through their medicals, their licenses. Um, but there's also vocational courses that come with the boxing as well. So the England boxing level one, level two, box course, safeguarding, uh, amongst others. That's partnered with England Boxing. So our coaches are England Boxing qualified. Um, and we've got a really fantastic cohort of boxers at the moment. Some are competing at a very high level uh, and are ambitious to progress on. And, and who knows, maybe one day go to the Olympics or, or turn professional. We also have the tennis program. Uh, that's almost I'd call it a tennis scholarship package. So there's three tiers that we have on offer with the tennis. So there's tier one, tier two, and tier three. A tier one player is someone rated between 1.1 and 6.2. So if you're rated in that uh, bracket, which if you're a tennis player, you'll know what I mean by that, um, that unlocks our top tier of scholarship support. So we invest a certain amount of funding with WIMEX towards your tennis development, and they'll build a bespoke program for you around your studies. So that's in that's infilling into their their own academy squads that could be individuals that could be an SSC program it makes you receive in the region of around eight nine hours nine hours a week of tennis provision uh, with Wimex uh, whilst you're with us if you're on tier two that drops down to around four to five hours a week uh, of tennis provision no sorry five hours a week of tennis provision I think on tier two and if you're in tier three it's sort of three hours a week in addition uh, there is the working workforce opportunities with it. So again, we put all our tennis scholarship players through their LTA level one. And if they're in their second year, their LTA level two, um, so that they leave with not just having progressed in their sport, but also in their academics and on the vocational side. The basketball we're partnered with, uh, Lloyd Gardner is our program director. So Lloyd is currently the head coach of the Manchester Giants. Um, he's just one coach of the, the month in the BBL. Um, and Lloyd's got a real pedigree in producing young basketball players. He was the uh, director of basketball at Barking Abbey before his time uh, at the London City Royals as head coach and now as Manchester Giants head coach. And his staff underneath him run our basketball programme. Um, the team training is Tuesday and Friday afternoons with a games programme on a Wednesday. And if there's no game, then training. And then there's individual technical morning practices uh, on two days a week as well. So they can be playing up to five times a week, four or five times a week uh, on the basketball programme. The athletics programme, um, just finally, that's based out of Lee Valley. We partner with a company called Imperium Sports, which is uh, Gemma Wheatman and Mark Finley's company. So Mark and Gemma were both former British athletes. Um, and Mark sprinted at a very high level and they've now very well-respected coaches and trainers. Uh, Mark, in particular, trains a lot of professional athletes uh, outside of his work with us. So with the athletics program, um, you can train up to four times a week, but it's a minimum of two. You can remain with your coach or your club outside of that, and we can complement what you're doing with your coach. You can just do the SNC with us and do your track-based work with, uh, with your club coach. You can do a hybrid of both whatever it might be, but we tend to, athletics is quite a small community, so we tend to work it through with um, with the coaches from, from each individual athlete's club and, and negotiate what, what do you want us to work on with your athlete. So I think it's important, that's a very brief headline overview. As I said, there'll be some individual webinars coming up in January, which I'll delve into specifics, or if you want to go onto the website and look and read into more uh, about each individual programme. What I think it's important to say is that in terms of your academic course, you don't have to be studying a sports course to be on the sports academies. We have a number doing A-levels, some doing business. Uh, in many cases, you can do pretty much most courses at the college, but it will have to fit around 
uh, it would your curriculum obviously takes precedence so in terms of your timetables there are some that work better than others sports works very well and has we've got a long history of people doing sports courses and doing sports academies a levels has worked quite well um, business should work well but we tend to say try and go and down into one though one of those areas but if you want to diversify that's okay um, but there is a chance it could interrupt the training so at this point I'm going to hand over to to Marco uh, and he's going to talk you through the um, sports curriculum thank you James um... Well, I was going to say, James, could you just um, maximize that that page for me, please? There we go. Thank you. Cheers. I was going to say, obviously, it does make sense if you want to be part of a, a an academy, obviously, to, to study sports. But most importantly, um, you should choose an area of study that you're interested in that you'd like to progress on to. So for those interested in sports, I think it is important for you to understand, actually, it sounds good, all these academies, but what exactly do I want to study? What exactly do I want to progress myself on to and further my, my education on? Um, like James said previously, education comes first. Um, alongside having that opportunity to develop yourself within a, an academy, within a sports that you enjoy, that's a great opportunity um, that we, we want to give you. Um, so our curriculum, the academic part now, I understand that uh, it's probably not interesting for some of you as the academies, but equally as important. So um, our curriculum design, um, we consider um, the needs of the learners, the needs of the employers, not just locally, but also at regional and national level. Um, and with that curriculum, we want to develop the learner, uh, the learner's knowledge. We want to develop your skills and you want to develop your behavior. So you are prepared for the next steps, not just employment, as you can see at the bottom of these slides, but could be progression within onto the next uh, level of study, progression onto HE, uh, whatever that may be. So we want to prepare you from day one uh, and in your journey with us uh, at Barnet and Southgate College. Um, so in terms of the, the knowledge that you'll be developing, uh, as I will show you in the next slide, um, the courses we offer are range from level one all the way to level five. Um, and again, in terms of the knowledge that you'll be developing, you'll be developing the, you know, your knowledge around sports science, sports development, uh, pedagogy, so PE, uh, teaching, coaching, sports therapy, fitness, uh, nutrition. So that's a range of uh, knowledge that you would be developing within uh, sports. And a lot of those knowledge, that knowledge will be um, transferable onto other areas as well. So don't think that just by the fact that you're studying sports, you then have to progress onto university, for instance, within uh, and study in the same area, study sports. Uh, we have a lot of students that have actually studied sports because they were interested uh, in studying sports. And then eventually they decided um, uh, further down the line to actually progress into a different area but because of that passion for sports and they wanting to study sports and developing their knowledge uh, they've decided to do a qualification with us within sports um, skills developed um, organization skills interpersonal skills uh, independent decision making time management which is very important um, and then very important keywords in there explain evaluate analyze so all these are um, keywords that actually help to develop you to a higher level of learning so um, looking at those distinction grades as opposed to identifying and describing things which is a, a very lower level so that's more for pass so we want our students to do well not just from the academic 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 standpoint but also from an academic standpoint we want them to achieve those high grades um, and then the behaviors they will be developing so independence accountability consciousness um, you know being resilient about your studies about it's not about um, having a knock and actually giving up is about persisting and improving and continuing to do to do better um, and then things around attendance punctuality and your 
professional code of conduct in and outside the college. So um, all these are things that we look to develop you. So it's not just from an education standpoint, but also your personal develop uh, personal development and your behaviors and your attitudes. Um, next slide, please, James. So um, this is just an overview of the, the our curriculum offer. So at this point, I would probably say actually at this stage it's important for you to take into consideration how you're doing with your GCSEs. Um, again, if you do really well in your GCSEs, um, you'll probably be looking to join us on a level three uh, course. But if for any reason uh, you're not doing as well as you expected on your GCSEs, um, then potentially you can join us on a BTEC level two or a level two qualification or on a level one qualification. So I'm going to start from the left. So BTEC level one is a one year qualification. Um, and then again, so that's a, a, a lower qualification for those that didn't really do as well as they expected on the GCSEs. Um, after that year, they can progress into a, a level two qualification. So that's three different pathways in here. So one, uh, NVQ level two in coaching, uh, as the name says, uh, that's a coaching qualification. Uh, and that's where we've got links with local primary schools and uh, our LLDD department, where you would be uh, teaching the PE curriculum and coaching uh, to uh, primary school uh, kids or uh, students with disabilities in our within our college. Um, we've got a BTEC level two qualification, which is a one year qualification. Um, and we also got a YMCA level two uh, in fitness. So this is also one year qualification and that is a, a fitness instructor qualification. So after this year on the YMCA level two, you become qualified as a fitness instructor and therefore straight away more employable. So you can then start applying for jobs um, in, uh, in gyms uh, where you can work as a fitness instructor. Um, then progressing onto the following year, so BTEC level three, uh, diploma in sports, that's a two year qualification. And across the two years, this is equivalent to a two A level qualification. Um, we also got a BTEC level three extended diploma in sports, which is also a two year qualification, but instead of being equivalent to a two year a 2A level qualification, it's equivalent to a 3A level qualification. So that means that you have more units to do across the two years um, in comparison to the BTEC uh, level three diploma in sports. Uh, we also offer a BTEC level three extended diploma in eSports and I haven't mentioned it, uh, I will mention it now. So for next academic year, we're looking to open a BTEC level two um, in eSports. So again, if you don't meet the entry requirements to get onto the eSports and you have a passion to uh, about gaming and um, eSports, then you also have the opportunity to do a BTEC level two, which is a one year qualification and then progress onto a BTEC level three extended diploma in eSports. Um, and we also have a YMCA level three in fitness. This is a personal training qualification uh, and that's a one year qualification. So progression for these YMCA level three is you need to achieve a YMCA level two fitness. So even if you do really well with your GCSEs and you want to become a personal trainer, then you would always have to do a YMCA level two first uh, and then a YMCA level three. And this is a requirement from uh, SIMSPA and the awarding bodies. Um, and then you've got a higher level, which is for 18 plus uh, students. So when they finish the level three qualification, uh, we offer the HNC in coaching and HND in coaching. Um, then again, so that's a, a two year qualification. And from here, you can do your final year, two years at, uh, of a degree at a university. On the right hand side of these slides, you can see the different progression pathways. So whether that is employment and the, the curriculum design is or was designed in a way to actually give you the opportunity to think if you want to progress and become more employable within the fitness industry, then you've got qualifications to do. 
so you can become qualified as a personal trainer, for example. Um, if you wish to go to university, then uh, BTEC pathway, uh, BTEC level three would then be the pathway for you, where you can then choose to study as a PE degree, uh, as a, to become a PE teacher, uh, to study strength and conditioning qualifications, sports science in general, sports therapy. So that's a whole range of different um, progression opportunities within HE. Um, following from there, so all these qualifications will allow you to um, develop your knowledge, your skills, your behaviors, and be prepared uh, to become uh, physical education teachers, PE assistants, coaches, instructors, personal trainers, uh, work within the leisure um, industry as well, um, fitness management, and so on. You can also do apprenticeships following from these qualifications. Um, and then, like I've mentioned before, uh, study HE, where you've got all range of courses that you, you can do. Um, from esports, I'm going to be, this is the first year we're going to run esports so in september 2022 uh, we've started already uh, with some our, some of our students they uh, really keen in gaming and uh, online gaming so uh, we entered some students to play rocket league this year against other colleges and we um, actually play on uh, on a weekly basis every wednesday uh, and there's a lot of tra transferable skills uh, from those um, james next slide please so in terms of our academic offer, so the BTEC level three, we've got the national diploma and the national extended diploma. Like I said, that's a two year qualification for the national diploma, which is a equivalent to two A levels. The entry requirements are four GCSEs, grade nine to four, uh, or the old grading A to C, um, or a BTEC level two certificate in sports uh, pass. If you wish to study on the BTEC Level 3 Extended Diploma uh, in sports, which is a uh, equivalent to 3A levels, entry requirements are five GCSEs, grade 9 to 4, including maths and English, um, or a BTEC Level 2 certificate in sports as a merit grade, again, including uh, maths and English. If you wish to study a BTEC Level 2 first certificate in sports, the entry requirements are four GCSEs, grade nine to three, uh, or BTEC Level 1 introductory diploma in sports at a merit um, grade. For your Level 1 BTEC uh, introductory diploma in sports, the entry requirements are two GCSEs um, or um, other entry level qualification. Um, moving on, please, James. So, like I've mentioned before, next academic year, we've got two new courses, the BTEC Level 2, um, sorry, that's a, an error in there, by the way, uh, BTEC Level 2 um, certificate in eSports. Um, entry criteria is four GCSEs, grades 9 to 3, including English and Maths. Um, and the BTEC Level 3 National Extended Diploma in eSports will be five GCSEs, grade 9 to 4, including uh, English or Maths or a BTEC Level 2 certificate at a merit grade. Ideally, BTEC Level 2 in eSports, but then again, if you haven't done it, um, you still got the opportunity to study eSports. Um, eSports is not just about gaming, it's not just about playing online. Uh, there is a lot of preparation, a lot of planning, uh, hence why BTEC, uh, Pearson in this case, which is the awarding body, has decided to launch a brand new qualifications uh, to prepare our learners for not just eSports, but like I said before, could be a series of transferable skills. And I will show you on the next slide what are the career pathways for, for within eSports. Um, so career uh, pathways for eSports. Like I said, there's a lot of transferable skills that could be developed within eSports. It's about teamwork, it's about leadership, communication, strategic thinking, problem solving. Um, we've got students who are a little bit more reserved, for example, and they actually really come out of the shelf uh, when, they doing, when they're playing games. 
online gaming, communicating with other with the peers, for instance, um, uh, you know, strategic thinking, just coming up with a plan uh, to beat the opponents. So the, all that actually allowed other students. It became quite inclusive and allowed a lot, a lot of students to come out of their shell and just be a little bit more voice the, their opinion as well and be more participate uh, pr participate more. Um, roles within esports: uh, professional player coaches, uh, shoutcasters, hosts, analysts, um, observers, and so on. Uh, there's a lot of academic links. So this means that students that study esports don't need necessarily to follow a degree or progress within esports, but there is a lot of links and careers that it could be linked to that. So uh, computer science, ICT, sciences, technology, engineering, maths, um, you know, that's a lot of opportunities for for students that want to actually seek a, a pathway within esports. Um, how is esports linked with sports? Like I said, we actually in sports we're quite active, and we 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 like to just be out and just do a play a sports uh, instead of being you know set in front of a screen and playing games. But in esports. Actually, there is a very um, important important component of becoming physically active and fit uh, in order to perform well within the esports uh, and gaming. So um, it's important to follow a healthy lifestyle. Um, eat well. It's uh, you know just following a, a, a good nutrition. So all that there are things that will be taught and learned within um, the, the qualification, as well as um, media related uh, and business related subjects. Moving on, please, James. In terms of the vocational routes uh, within sports, we've got the level two NVQ qualification, like I've mentioned. So that's a coaching qualification entry requirements at level two for GCSEs grade nine to three. Um, YMCA level two personal training qualification, uh, sorry, uh, gym instruction qualification. Um, that's again for GCSEs grade nine to three uh, or BTEC level two um, with a pass. And the YMCA level three personal training qualification, you need to have a YMCA level two or fitness uh, level two qualification or equivalent. And then Finally, the higher education, so our H&D program, um, we, in we thought that actually a lot of our students feel quite comfortable uh, within the education setting at the college. A lot of our students want to progress to a higher level, but can't really afford going to university. So um, the HND in coaching, that's a perfect um, opportunity and an excellent pathway for you. Um, if you one, because it's more cost effective, so it doesn't cost as much as a, de a degree or each year at the degree um, at university. So the, the fee on the HND qualification is around £6,000 as opposed to the £9,000 per year. Um, it's more personalized and you've got direct entry straight onto the second year of uh, undergraduate degrees at many universities. So again, within that period with us, you still have the opportunity to have a very close support by the teaching staff uh, whilst you're studying at a level four and level five. And we've got also the NFL Coaching Academy, uh, which uh, that's in partnership with the NFL Academy. So uh, we will have students as part of the NFL Academy doing this qualification as well. Over to you again, James. Thank you. So just unmute myself and turn my camera back on. Okay. <clears throat> right, so yes, I'll whiz through the remaining slides. So TAS, so those 44% those of you, I think it was, who thought they were a, a national or international level athlete. So. We are a TAS dual career accredited uh, college uh, that essentially stands for Talented Athletes Scholarship Scheme. So it's almost like a marker of excellence to say that we are an expert college at managing talented athletes within education. So if you are 16 to 24 and you're in education uh, and you are a athlete of, a, of that level, you should come to us because we have a talented athlete policy. We put on workshops to help our 
help our learners on certain subjects. For example, uh, last Wednesday evening, I organised a U United Kingdom Anti-Doping Association 100% Me workshop. So that was stuff on doping processes, supplement usage, uh, the testing procedures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, there'll also be things like nutrition and SNC workshops uh, outside of the the main academy programs. And you can be uh, elite level in any sport and not be on our academy programs, but still access uh, our TAS uh, offerings. We were the first FE college in the country to have it, um, and those two athletes on your screen there, Jess Naz and Deji, are two. Two have come through it. Deji's out in the States on an American scholarship at the moment uh, in tennis at Liberty, and, and Jess is obviously playing for England and, and Tottenham Hotspur. And that's just, uh, they're just two of a number. So, uh, healthy and safe. So, as it says on the tin, uh, this is what we do to provide uh, for our student athletes uh, outside of the coaching and the academics, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, we have a physiotherapy clinic. Um, with Jack Dimitri who heads it up and has some placement students who work underneath him. So any knocks, any injuries that uh, you have as a student athlete, um, you can go and get free treatment from him in our clinics. And then we have the physios at the home uh, football matches as well. And the NFL Academy have got uh, trainers, as they're called in that sport, uh, at every practice and also additional um, clinic hours as well. We have two gyms on site at the Southgate campus. So we have the NFL Academy Performance Gym, which is a real high spec, top of the range facility, um, manned by the SNC coaches. And you have to be supervised with an SNC coach to go in there and use it. And we also have the original gym, uh, which is staffed and used just a drop in gym that any uh, student at the college can use free of charge um, and have programs written for them and do their rehab and recovery and whatever they need to do. Uh, to improve, improve your physical performance. Uh, we do transport uh, our students to and from training and matches unless uh, it's a home game or they choose to go directly themselves. We try and put direct uh, transport on uh, in every case. And that's with our fleet of minibuses. So it's quite a logistical operation to get people to from, from everywhere uh, on a daily basis. And then the NFL Academy has got a, a student development and welfare officer um, who supports us in making sure our students are catered for um, whilst they're at the college. What do we expect from you guys? Comes down to four things. Turn up, turn up on time, apply yourself and meet your coursework deadlines. Uh, and if you do those four things, then there's so many opportunities that we offer as a college, both in the academies program and the academic side of things, progression opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll be able to access the full scope of those um, opportunities. But if you're not doing those four things, then we start to remove things away from you and the, those opportunities can be taken away from you. The academics come first. Education is a priority. You're here to get a qualification um, and you're here to, to move on to those exit pathways. Yes, you're here to be developed as an athlete as well. But the academics come first and certainly depending on the sport you're in if the nfl academy for example if you've got ambitions to go to the states if your academics are not there you're not going to get there uh, it's simple as that they go hand in glove um so the key point is to manage your time while you're with us so being a student athlete is hard there's lots of demands on you lots of times that you're tired or have additional training to do whatever it might be you need to be responsible to manage your time manage your diary um, you're not in 8.30 to 3.30 every day, like you are with school. You have your lesson timetables, you have your training timetables. Outside of that time, it's up to you to get your coursework done uh, and make sure you're doing what you need to do. And if you need that support, that's where you need to come and talk to the staff. Uh, no one said they wanted to hear about this, but I'll talk about it anyway, very briefly. Cross college enrichment. So there is a there is a sports enrichment program that's available for any member, any student of the college to drop in and attend at uh, any time the uh, timetables there on the bottom left uh, and through that we've also have other clubs like the volleyball club for example which uh, has actually been really successful uh, in its time and they've gone themselves to national championships in the past so just finally any questions and this is where just before i move on to the questions i'll just say if you want to follow us and uh, get in touch there's marco my email address is there on the top of the screen 
and there are some uh, social media accounts to make a note of. So the Instagrams, the Twitters, um, et cetera, et cetera. Some of our sports have got their own individual ones, uh, some don't, um, but we tend to uh, recirculate everything. So Mick will pop, possibly pop the uh, email addresses in the chat, um, but just uh, have a little quick note down of those various things there. So, as I said, any questions, and at this point, I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to go back. Oh, okay. See, my video wasn't working then. Okay. So, if I move on to the Q&A, uh, Marco, you can put your video back on now and unmute yourself. Uh, hello, will there be a specific section of today's presentation for international students? Um, well, I've finished the presentation, but if you are an international student, Mark and I finished the presentation. If you are an international student, um, there is processes you need to go through um, regarding uh, IELTS tests and um, uh, visas and so forth. So what I would suggest is if you email one of us uh, or look at the international page uh, on the college website um, to go through what the process is going to be for international students. Um, next question. So do the footballers just do football? No, you have to do an academic course alongside your academy programme. So be that A-levels or business or sport, as Marco was touching on, um, you need to do uh, an academic course and the football is built in around on top of that as part of the study program. How many days a week do students come into college? That can range depending on the course. Um, it depends on your academic timetable and your training timetable. Can be five days a week that you've got something associated with us. Can be three days a week. Um, your education could be condensed into two days a week and you have training on other days. It really depends on the course that you're doing um at the level and um maths and, and your academy program and maths and english as well of course what time will the lecture start again it depends on the timetable like i said it's not school it's not 8 30 to 3 30 every day um and uh you some lessons will start at nine sometimes you won't have a lesson till one in the afternoon it really depends but you might have training starting at nine it really depends on your individual needs and your individual program. How does the UK government propose changes to the BTEC course impact the school's education program? That's a uh, that's a very um, educated question, um, sir, whoever asked that. So uh, in short, there's no, not going to be any changes in the short term. Um, those changes are not due to come in for a year or two. Uh, if they even do come in. I know there's a lot of development on T-levels, um, but all this is going through um, conversations with government from AOC uh, and individual stakeholders. There's not going to be any short-term changes. So if you are a year 11, um, then that, it's likely not going to affect you uh, at all, possibly even year 10 or even year 9. Th these changes tend to come in quite slowly. And sometimes they don't even have to come in at all. But there's a lot of lobbying on the benefits of BTEC and how they are beneficial to learners over what some of the, the proposed changes are going to be. So they're still valid qualifications. They're internationally recognised and they're on parity with A-levels in the Level 3 and Level 3 Extended Diploma case. Uh, what is other entry qualifications? Depends what you mean. So it depends. I'm not too sure what that question is referring to. Um, but it may mean that other than GCCs, it might be BTECs or, or NCFE courses, for example. How does it work with school if I'm a tennis player? Um, like I said, it's built into your study programme. So you come and study here at the college uh, and then your timetable is mapped out with our tennis partners and you have tennis where you have tennis scheduled and you have college where you have college scheduled and then they uh, they shouldn't clash with each other if we've done our job properly uh how do you get into the school and tennis academies do you have to complete any paper online or do you go there personally so you guys can see us okay so in terms of your applications to the college 
Um, I'm sure Nick will put on the uh, chat function uh, links to apply for the academic calls if he hasn't done already, uh, or links to the academic um, pages. So to apply for your course, you can apply for your course through through the website. Um, to apply for the academies, you can also apply through the website, and I'm sure Nick will also put on the chat the sports registration form for the academies. Um, with the academies, um, once we once I receive your uh, application, so the person who asked that question, I have actually received your applications to the tennis program. Um, the partners will eventually be in touch with you or I'll be in touch with you with any trial days or any practical open days that we've scheduled so that we can get you on the field or on the court or uh, in the ring, whatever the sport might be, so we can assess your sporting level um, and you can meet the coaches, get a feel for us and we progress it from there. And if you're made an offer to the sport, you then have to apply for academic course or you that might be part of the trial day. Obviously, we've had to do things a bit differently over COVID. Um, and then you'll receive an offer from your course as well. And whether some courses might do interviews, some might do just conditional offers. Um, Marcos and, and sports guys tend to just do conditional offers, but there might be some phone consultations this year. So you'll be given your offers and um, there you have it. You'll then have an offer to both academics and the sports academy of your choice. Okay, what's the program on a tennis player doing A levels in Barnet and Southgate College? I'm not too sure what you mean by that, uh, Roberta, but um, you would pick your three A levels, you would do your three A levels, and then your, your tennis provision would be built on top of that uh, and fitted into your timetable and to the volume of hours that I mentioned within the talk regarding what tier of, of player you are. Do you offer any sponsorships for athletics, contribution to athletes, travel, et cetera? So there is general student support through the bursary program to help with travel. As I say, we um, transport our students to training um, for the most part, nearly all the time, uh, which is based at Lee Valley. So it's not very far and it's very accessible by public transport. So um, yeah, in terms of additional support, if, if our students maybe qualify for national championships, that is something that we've supported with the, the cost of going and the coaches have gone with them. Uh, we've even supported with the cost of accommodation if you're a really high performing uh, athlete. But it's it's done on a case by case basis. We don't certainly don't give students a lump of money to use to progress their sports competitions. It's a it's a conversation with us. Okay, what do you need? What level are you performing at? And whether we can support in that or not. But in terms of our students representing us in competitions, we do transport them to that. Um, if getting into the academy, would you be living on campus or is that something you'll talk about in the future? I'm assuming that's the NFL Academy, but we do have students who uh, relocate for all our programs at various points. Um, we don't have any accommodation on campus. Uh, all our students are generally situated with homestay families. Um, so we use British Council registered hosts, uh, host families um, to support our students there. So that would be a relationship between that company and those that, uh, that family and your own family that you would then pay to live amongst that family for, for the duration of your time at the college. Um, there's some more information regarding uh, homestay on the NFL Academy Prospectus, which is on the homepage of the website. Can we do a BTEC and A-levels together? Uh, not currently, we can't, no. Uh, you have to do either three A-levels or in the case of sports, you have to do your BTEC in sports or your MBQ in sports or your YMCA in sports um, because one, they're different campuses, so that it's not log it's not logistically possible to travel between the campuses to access the different timetables, and the timetables don't necessarily collaborate with each other. Uh, two, the B techs that uh, Marco delivers in sport are higher, uh, fuller B techs, so they're the diplomas, the extended diplomas, the extended certificates. Um, so they are full time courses in their own right, whereas the any schools who do a combination of 
A levels and BTECs together, the BTECs they're delivering are the awards, which are the smaller qualifications. So they're, they're less hours and they're less UCAS points. In the future, that's something we have discussed at a strategic level, whether we might have some collaboration, but at the moment, no. Um, when do we start applying for the course? You can apply for your academic courses right now. Um, I think Nick's put in the chat, you can do that right away. And if you've um, already done a trial or, or I know we had a boys football one in the February half term, which will be feeding back on shortly. Um, yeah, well, you, you can be all sorted very soon, um, but you can apply for your course uh, right away through the website, I think, I believe. Where can we find this record for further purposes? This, this webinar uh, will be hosted in the uh, open events as a recording. So the open event, virtual open event, and you can watch these recordings um, in, and they'll probably be available from next week, I imagine, or when all the webinars are finished. You can watch recordings of previous webinars that I've done with the head coaches on the individual academy page uh, of each academy on the website, on the Barnett South Africa College website. Uh, how many hours of chop do you do a day? I don't know what that means. Does that mean sport? I'm not sure. Uh, and do you do school every day? I think I've answered the, the timetabling thing regarding uh, college hours. Um, I went for a trial at Harringay Stadium on 25th to 10th. Yeah, so we're getting back to people about that one. Um, what happens when your courses are at different campuses? Do you have to travel to a different campus something your timetable so if you're doing a levels for example you would go to wood street for your course we do transport students from wood street to southgate to then transport them to training but you would go to we won't transport them back again um because training is usually at the end of the day in that in those timetable cases but it's quite easy to get between wood street and southgate it's only 15 minutes apart when do we have to enroll? Uh, enrollment, uh, main enrollment generally takes place on GCSE results day onwards. Um, we, we're having a focus group at the moment regarding the enrollment procedures for the college. So whether there'll be any changes, but the key thing to say is if you've applied for your course and you've received an offer and you've accepted the offer, then there'll be regular communications that come from the admissions and marketing team regarding next steps and um, the, what the processes are for your enrollment enrollment uh, at the college. Is there an open day to visit the campus? Yes, the next open day for the Southgate campus is on November the 20th uh, between 10 a.m. and 2. November 20th between 10 and 2. Um, okay, the follow-up question are other entry qualifications. I think for an international student, if you go on the international page of the website, um, and get in touch with us there. We have an international officer who will be able to answer your questions there. Is the h and in Sport and Exercise Science just specifically for coaching or will it cover more stuff as I want to get into either teaching or sports journalism? Marco, do you want to take that one? Sure. Um, it's, it's mainly focused on coaching. Um, but then again, uh, it could be transferable skills uh, onto university. I mean, the units that we deliver uh, vary. So, um, but it's mainly, it's mainly coaching pathway. Okay, thank you. Um, can you do mechanical and still join the academy? I don't know which academy you were talking about there, Sean, but um, and I assume you mean mechanical engineering or engineering. Uh, potentially, yes. Uh, or yes, but um, we'd need to map out your individual time. So it's not a route well trodden, uh, I'll put it that way. But um, it's not to say no. It depends on the timetable, the level of course you're wanting to do um, and the individual academy timetable. So to be able to do a football academy, we have to apply for a sport course in sports. Am I correct? No, you're not correct, Sertan. You can do any, uh, in theory, you could do any qualification or you can choose a different qualification most do sports, most do sports, but you can do A-levels, you can do B-techs, uh, sorry, business uh, or, or other course areas, but it really depends on an individual basis. So it's possibly something that when you come to your football trial, we have that conversation there and then about what you're looking to do academically. Um, and I think, 
This is the final question. I haven't got my mock or predicted grades yet. Can I still apply? When's the closing date? And is it first come, first serve? Great question. Um, no, it doesn't matter that you haven't got your grades yet. You're applying for a course. And then based on that application, you'll be sent a conditional offer saying, these are the grades you need to achieve or we'd like you to achieve to get onto that course. And then if you don't achieve um, those grades, you should still come to the college after you've got them to speak to the team, to speak to the teachers, Marco's team, because there'll likely be a course for you or there will be a course for you. It just depends what you've got the grades to get onto. As Marco said, when in his levels, for example, if you don't get onto level three, you'll be asked to be put onto level two. If you don't go onto level two, you'll be put on the level one, for example. Um, there's no closing date as such. So you've got between now and October half term next year, potentially to get onto a course. But what I would say is you want to enroll and start your course on time. So the sooner you apply, the sooner you get your conditional offer, the sooner and the sooner you're settled and you've got that assurance there. And then you'll be follow including all the follow up conversations. Um, and you means you can start induction week and in pre-season and whatever it might be from there and in on time and you're all settled nice and early. Um, but, you know, we do we have students who apply now uh, and enroll and we also have students who walk in on GCSE results day um, and enroll then. So and everything in between. So. But, yeah. Uh, can you please repeat your answer for doing mechanical in the academy? So. As I say, it's not impossible to do mechanical engineering and an academy, but um, yeah, it depends. It depends. So we could get a conditional offer before Christmas. Yes, you could. Is that right, Marco? Yeah, should be 10 to 10, two weeks, I think, from your course application, I believe. Yeah, I mean, we, we get um, customer service will send us the list of uh, people that have applied and then we'll respond back with with a conditional with a conditional offer but please do get in touch if you don't hear from us please uh, do get in touch with us if you have any further questions or anything get in touch and we'll um, we'll answer to your questions okay um, if I don't get onto an academy can I still join a football team you can play for a football team outside of the college whether you're in an academy or not um, we don't have any football teams that's not associated with the, with an academy. So there's general turn up in Richmond, five aside in the sports hall. Um, but uh, in terms of academy, 11 aside, um, it's just through the, through the academy program. Okay. And that seems to be all the questions, folks. So um, thank you for tuning in. Um, just over the hour mark there, but um, lots of good questions. Hopefully we were informative and hopefully we will see you, well, definitely in September next year um, and definitely before that at one of your sports academy trials, I'm sure, or practical open days. So, uh, and maybe even on November the 20th at the, the next open day. So thank you very much and uh, have a great evening. Thank you. Bye.